Hi there, it's Timmy Joe, and you might call me an AMD fanboy because I got an RX 480 in my Ryzen system and I bleed red. But it wasn't so long ago that I couldn't bear to have a red card in my system. What changed? Well, I really loved Intel and Nvidia, but money is a huge issue when it comes to both of those platforms they are very expensive performance for dollar and rightfully so they have some amazing technologies but they've been making some headway ryzen is really inexpensive for what it is and uh, a platform we know so little about the best background i could come up with is some picture of some guy's computer showing a presentation that's a leak that's not supposed to be on the internet or something uh, of the AMD Vega graphics card, which is a brand new architecture that's coming out of AMD that's going to rock the world of gaming, I believe. And that's because it's a whole new architecture that AMD's been developing for years and years, and what they did was they kind of released this RX to tide us over, but this this is new stuff. This is brand new, competing with the end generation, end of cycles of stuff from NVIDIA. So I think this is some pretty exciting stuff, and it's worth talking about and breaking down what we know so far, because it's due to launch sometime soon, probably somewhere in the area of Computex, June, end of May. So, uh, Q and intro, we're going to talk all about what we know about Vega so far. Okay, stop the presses. In between filming this, uh, AMD went ahead and launched their brand new series of graphics cards, the RX 580, not Vega. So no need to worry. Uh, this is, uh, you know, th this means some good stuff for Vega. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, this is just a revamp to their RX line. Basically, they've, you know, made the manufacturing process cheap and they're able to lower the prices a bit and turn the clock speeds up a bit put a new you know five moniker on it and uh resell it and it's gonna you know it's still good cards they still compete in the lower segment they still compete in areas in which nvidia doesn't really uh with like a 550 which is like an 80 dollar graphics card that's just slightly better than onboard graphics uh, but yeah, the, you know, the, they're there and uh, if anything, it's a good thing because it shows that uh, Vega is just coming. It's just around the corner and uh, they wanted to make sure that this line was updated so that they could kind of sell them side by side. So Vega is rumored to be launched at Computex. That's where the RX 480 was launched last year. But more than likely, they're going to have a special event for this all on its own sometime between May 30th and June 13th. Uh, that's when E3 is. So somewhere between Computex and E3. And uh, that means, you know, it's happening soon. By summer, you're going to see Vega. And, you know, by the midsummer, you should actually see some reviewers have hands on of this thing and some review samples. Uh, they're kind of laying this all out in 2017, you know, where is Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, and then Vega, and, you know, who knows where they'll go from there. I hear there's going to be a high-end Vega 11, and then there's going to be, like, kind of like a, a 1070 version that's going to be Vega 10. But who knows where it'll actually place in the, you know, in, in NVIDIA scheme of things. But just shows it's, it's coming out soon. So... What is changing with Vega? Why are we waiting for this? Why don't they just make the RX line faster and add more gigahertz to it? And, you know, and then it's, it'll magically compete with the high end from NVIDIA. Well, uh, AMD's been relying on their same architecture, the GCN architecture, and just been doing slight tweaks and revamps on it. Uh, every year with every iteration of the R9 and, 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 and you know, so forth. Uh, but nothing much has changed. And I think in about 2015, they took a step back with the, uh, you know, they, they had this high bandwidth memory. Uh, and they wanted to implement it and they put it out with the R9 Fury X. But it uh, was very expensive to manufacture and it didn't go over well, but I don't think it was meant to. It was more of a foot in the water, a toe in the water for AMD just to gauge uh, you know, how 
their stuff could compete with Nvidia at the time. And the uh, Iron and Fury X, it was you know so experimental. It had a water cooler on it, shipped right from AMD. The first reference card with a water cooler. So it wasn't meant to be some high you know volume thing. Uh, it, it was just meant to see how high bandwidth memory could work because it was very expensive. It was as much as a 980 Ti at the time. But, uh, you know, the 980 Ti still ended up beating it in most scenarios, especially because the 980 Ti could overclock like crazy. So they take a step back, much like they did with Ryzen, and, uh, you know, they plan a roadmap so that by 2017, they're launching Vega, and it's set up so that it's, you know, a little bit less expensive to manufacture, and they have their 14 nanometer process all honed. And uh, what they're doing is they're basically changing the way memory is laid out in video cards so that stuff can get to the graphics processing unit smarter, faster, and uh, it, it more efficiently at a less power consumption. And they're, they're basically eliminating uh, DDR5 memory from the card itself and putting this high bandwidth memory that they're it's so fast they're calling it high bandwidth cache now it's so close to the gpu it's not you know if speed isn't a factor it's so much faster than ddr5 memory that it, it doesn't it's, it, it kind of makes it obsolete and non needed and then there are some other technologies that they're they've completely revamped but uh, just to kind of give you the cliff notes cuz i myself do not understand all of it we'll understand it more once it's implemented and we see it working in games but four times power efficiency two times peak throughput of performance per clock it's got a high bandwidth cache uh, two times bandwidth per pin eight times capacity per stack in the second generation high bandwidth memory uh, 512 terabytes of virtual address space what that is is it's able to access memory like from your ram on your system or uh, some virtual space like an ssd or network attack storage that's more for like uh, data centers and stuff like that that use um, the graphics cards like there's these security firms and stuff like that and bankers that use you know they need to process lots of information and they have just like banks and banks of titan x's and banks and banks of 1080 ti's and they want to get a part of that market these are people that have huge pockets deep pockets and they're not using amd products right now now amd has had uh you know the xbox and the, the gaming console and the ps4 on their side up until now but uh, that's chump change compared to you know banks and huge corporations that do all kinds of data mining. Uh, so the, the you know next level stuff there. Uh, there's a next generation compute engine, which is how data is processed on the GPU. Next generation pixel engine. Next generation compute unit optimized for higher clock speeds. Uh, rapid packed math. Draw stream binning rasterizer and primitive shader now i have no idea what most of that means i mean I, I you know i'm smart enough and i've been doing this for a long, long enough that i understand what cache is i understand what instructions per clock are but what there, there's a huge list of things they're changing on this you know vega graphics card and what it comes down to is they're not just tweaking a few things and moving on with a higher clock speed they are changing the rule book, the playbook. They want to uh, build a system from the ground up that's scalable for the next six years into 2020 so that every year they're tweaking this new system and making it better. So we're, we know that the, uh, you know, the, the, 14 nanometer process isn't changing. The Polaris GPU itself isn't changing much, but how all this uh, information is rendered and how it gets there is changing. And that's exciting stuff. That means they're trying new things and they have a, the beginning of a life cycle of a new product here, where NVIDIA has kind of reached the end of the life cycle with how they can do things with their GTX cards. And same with Intel. I mean, look at Skylake and Kaby Lake are virtually identical. And, uh, you know, Max well changed to pascal well they're not making their die any smaller in nvidia's cards so something else has to change and i'm sure they have something up their sleeve and who knows if it you know amd coming to market first is a good idea or not We'll have to see. That remains to be seen. And it also all depends on how easy it is to implement, you know, uh, uh, how this works inside of a video game or how this works inside of, uh, uh, you know, a rendering process. Because if 
it takes uh, a lot to, you know, they have to change a lot. They're not probably going to deviate uh, as quickly, and it might make it so Vega, you know, a lot of the features, the new features of it aren't utilized right away, and you don't see the performance gains right away. And we're seeing that a bit with Ryzen. It has a lot of cores, and a lot of things aren't optimized for a lot of cores. Is it going to work out the same way with Vega? You know, that remains to be seen. But let's switch it back over into the studio, and we'll sum things up. So, will Vega be the end-all be-all of amazing new graphics technologies that keeps us wanting more for years to come, or will it simply be a mainstream competitor to the 1080 Ti series, or will it even get that far? I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. However, I do think if you can uh, kind of go from what AMD has done with Ryzen and how, you know, maybe they did hype it up a little bit, but it certainly didn't meet with everyone expectations this time around uh, Vega is definitely going to be something to watch out for and I think it will make the uh, Nvidia have to shape up and develop new stuff on their own so having competition is always a wonderful thing in the computer space same thing for Intel I guarantee the next processor Intel comes out with is going to be a whopper so uh, it's great time to be a computer enthusiast as I always said I'm Timmy Joe watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Blah!